In this tutorial, Alex Sutton and myself, Nicola Cooper, will introduce MetaDTA. MetaDTA is an interactive web-based Shiny app that conducts meta-analysis of diagnostic test accuracy data through a point-and-click interface and creates novel data visualizations. I would like to start by acknowledging the researchers that have worked on the development of MetaDTA, as well as all members of the NIHR Complex Review Support Unit who have tested the app and provided valuable feedback throughout the development process. I would also like to acknowledge the funder, the National Institute for Health and Care Research in the UK. MetaDTA is part of a suite of online evidence synthesis apps developed by the Complex Review Support Unit. Separate ESMARCOMP 2023 tutorials are available on MetaBase DTA, which is an app for conducting Bayesian meta-analysis for diagnostic test accuracy, and MetaInsight, an app for conducting network meta-analysis. A new app focused on evidence-based research, MetaImpact, is currently in development. The main principles we adhered to when developing these apps were that they must be free to use and open source, where possible utilize existing R packages, have a point and click interface and have an emphasis on visualizations and methods for sensitivity analysis. Before introducing MetaDTA, I thought it would be useful to present a brief overview of diagnostic tests. Diagnostic tests are routinely used in healthcare setting to confirm the presence or absence of disease. For example, the presence or absence of COVID-19. Unfortunately, diagnostic tests are rarely 100% accurate. And those that are, known as perfect gold standards, may be too expensive, invasive, and or take a long time to process. Therefore, cheaper and quicker to administer imperfect diagnostic tests are developed, and their accuracy is assessed against the gold standard. For an interactive explorable explanation of diagnostic test accuracy, please see our DTA primer. Our motivation for developing MetaDTA was driven by the added complexity of meta-analysis models for synthesizing diagnostic test accuracy data compared to meta-analysis models for effectiveness data and the lack of user-friendly software in which to undertake such analyses. The added complexity is due to diagnostic test accuracy being a measure of two dependent variables. Sensitivity, the proportion of people with the disease who are correctly diagnosed as positive by the test, and specificity, the proportion of people without the disease who are correctly diagnosed as negative by the test. This requires the fitting of relatively complex bivariate statistical models, which can be a barrier for some researchers. The two main aims in developing MetaDTA were to develop a freely available user-friendly web-based point-and-click interactive tool which allows the user to input their own diagnostic test accuracy study data and conduct a meta-analysis for diagnostic test accuracy reviews, including the ability to incorporate quality assessment and conduct sensitivity analysis. And to develop interactive graphical displays to facilitate exploration of the diagnostic test data, including the meta-analysis, and effectively communicate the results to non-technical experts, as well as the ability to customize, explore, and export the plots for publication. MetaDTA uses, the, uses existing R packages Shiny and LME4. Shiny allows the creation of web application with interactive user interfaces. An LME4, a package that fits generalized linear mixed effect models, is used to fit the bivariate meta-analysis models. MetaDTA is hosted on the Shiny app server and is available to any users with a web browser without requiring any specialist statistical software. However, MetaDTA is not designed to replace statistical expertise and non-expert users are encouraged to consult a technical expert. I will now pass over to Alex Sutton, who will present a demonstration of MetaDTA. Okay, thanks, Nicholas. So I can never remember the exact web address of the apps. So if you type CRSU apps into Google, should be the first link and that shows all the apps the complex review support unit offer and if we go down to dta ma we get to the one we're using today clicking on the link and that should load the app up with a bit of luck and you you are presented with the 
opening screen, uh, legal things there, uh, just about data protection, read those at your own time. First things, uh, a couple of papers that we asked people to cite, did they describe the app if they use the app in a publication? That way we can measure how much use it's getting and hopefully it'll help funding it to come. Right, uh, there is a user guide you can download which has more details than I will be talking about today. Uh, you can get the app itself off GitHub if you want to modify or run it locally. Um, I think that's it, they're just showing the changes in the versions. So all the action happens at the top here, you uh, using this menu system here, we should get you through all the bits of the app. The first thing you need to do is load data. Now there is some data loaded in the app and I'm going to use that first and I recommend you do as well to get used to the app and make sure you understand what's going on before trying your own data. Some example data sets. I'm going to use the one which has added to it both quality assessment information and covariates uh, so we can see all the features of the app. I click that there. Uh, this page gives you some information about the data set. It's basically um, it, it's a test to measure dementia and call the IQ code test. Uh, it's a questionnaire. If we click through, we actually get the data that the file contains. 13 studies here. We have the author of the year, then the outcome data, true positive, false negative, false positive, true negative. Anyone familiar with these sorts of analyses will know that's the typical format of the outcome data. Uh, and they're essential in any analysis after this. We have extra columns giving uh, further information that you can use. As I said, we have these risk of bias um, and applicability measures seven in total across both um, from the uh, bias assessment tool that Cochrane Collaboration recommend. Then we have some covariates as well. We have the actual threshold used to determine whether somebody is deemed diseased or not by the test country this study was conducted in and these are different versions of the IQ code with different numbers of questions in it. Okay so that is uh, the data for analysis that so we'll go straight on and look at the analysis. The first tab here we have um, the data again but we also have the first things that the app has calculated the total number of uh, patients in each study and then we have the sensitivity and specificity of the test, i.e. the test outcomes and the weighting they get in the analysis there. So we're given the data there. We can move on to the next uh, tab. This is the yes, ROC plots. That's a summary ROC plot, receiver operating characteristic plot. Uh, very briefly it's a plot of sensitivity against one minus specificity. And on the plot here we have hollow circles indicating individual studies. There are 13 of those, one for each of the 13 studies in our meta-analysis. The blue dot is the pooled overall uh, meta-analyzed estimate of, of accuracy. The smaller of the two regions by the large dashes here, uh, that is the uncertainty, the 95% um, confidence interval around, or confidence region, I should say, around that estimate. And the larger one, uh, is the prediction interval, which reflects the amount of variability between studies as well. And there is heterogeneity in this data set beyond that you would expect uh, by chance alone. Uh, so uh, this region is considerably bigger than the, the confidence region because of variability between studies. Okay, um, there's quite a lot you can modify on this plot. Um, I won't go into it in detail, but you can uh, plot a curve uh, uh, as well, uh, it's called the SROC curve, and you can, we'll just take that off for a minute, and you can look at um, the study weights or the prevalence of disease in these studies as well. So the study weights, they're just an ellipse showing you the, uh, the size in each dimension reflects how much weight the studies get, and that's the prevalence. Sometimes it's concerned that tests uh, are a function of the prevalence and will change performance depending on how common the disease is. You can look at the individual um, uncertainty in the individual estimates as well. I'm just gonna go to the bottom and reset all that for speed. That takes you to how it was when you came into the app. And then we can look at these covariates and the quality scores. You can look at individual ratings of quality, here we go. Um, you can either have low, higher, and clear quality, and this is on the patient selection dimension. And we see there are a number of studies uh, which are red, which is saying high risk of bias for that particular dimension. 
and we can identify which studies are which if we click on the points. So if I click on the red dot up there, it's a rather extreme estimate of sensitivity. We find that's the Mulligan study and it gives its estimate of sensitivity and specificity there. Okay, um, you can look at all those seven separately or you can put them all on in the same time using a little symbol with seven segments, each one representing one of the dimensions. If you click on one of these circles, you'll get a blow up below. So this is Gonclaves, that study, and it's got the risk of bias is low in all but one dimension, the RS dimension here where it's high. And that's a nice way of summarizing the impact of quality on uh, of the studies while looking at the results as well. And we'll just take that off and then move and look at the covariates briefly. Again, so you could look and see whether the threshold used to diagnose somebody as having dementia using the test, if that's varying between studies, and we see it is a little bit, that might not be very clear to see. We can color code it and we see uh, one of the smaller sensitivities is the study with the highest threshold. And here the ones with the lowest threshold have the highest sensitivity up here, which is interesting, and the yellow somewhere in the middle. So it might be the test sensitivity is being uh, influenced by the threshold used in a particular study. Similarly, look at country. The categorization doesn't really help there. Uh, we have uh, the countries plotted on. And any of the covariates you included in the data set we can look at in this way. And then we can move on to the statistics which underlie that uh, plot to give you um, the pooled results. And there are others as well. I'm not going to go and explain what these are, uh, but if uh, you can certainly look those up. Uh, and there's some links at the end of the app which help with, with the technical details. These are parameter estimates for the bivariate model, which are basically the untransformed estimates that uh, we were looking at. You might find this um, panel useful if you are handing these the estimates over and to somebody who maybe is using those uh, in, in further modeling, like an economic decision model where you want the estimates and the uncertainty around them. And in a similar way, if you're a Cochrane user and you want uh, to plot your SROC in a Cochrane authoring tool, then here, um, are the estimates you need to type into that tool. Um, so this is a, a panel for the, uh, particularly for Cochrane users to, to reproduce the SROC in there. And finally, uh, this may look more familiar to people that don't do diagnostic test reviews but know about meta-analysis. We have forest plots separately for the two outcomes, sensitivity and specificity. And again, uh, always output anything. You can download as a PNG or PDF or any of the tables as well can be outputted uh, that you want to. Uh, so that's it for the meta-analysis tab, but we have a sensitivity analysis tab as well. And what this allows you to do, it looks almost identical to the previous tab, but it allows you to, to remove studies from the analysis. So if we move onto the SROC plot here, and say we're concerned with these studies up here with very high sensitivity, which studies are there? Well, they're Harwood and Mulligan. And if I wish to remove those just to see how much impact they're having on the analysis, we can see that the analysis updates, the old analysis, including all studies, is still included as a faint gray line, but the updated analysis is presented in the blue lines. And you can see uh, how much the pool estimate has changed as a result of excluding those two studies, not a huge amount in this case. And obviously you can uh, include or exclude studies as you wish to it to explore the data set. And all these other tabs are as they were in the previous, uh, in the meta-analysis tab up here, only it gives it for the selected studies only as well and allows you to make a comparison. I'm not going to show all those there. This tab is here, um, as people may find it helpful as a way of presenting the results uh, and imply that the help to put in um, interpret what those sensitivities and specificities mean, which are quite abstract concepts. So the idea is you think about a thousand patients, you set how common the disease is in the population you're interested in, by default it sets it to what the prevalence is on average across all the studies in the meta-analysis, but you can change it. So if you think prevalence in your local area is less, you can change that. And then it um, will tell you how many people are diseased and test positive and are not diseased and pest negative. And then the people who are misdiagnosed, either not 
disease but test positive or our disease but test negative and out of the thousand we have the numbers 272 235 28 and 465 here and we have um, intervals around those representing the uncertainty in the uh, performance of the test this can be a nice way of summarizing results there's a slightly different view there as well you can use and yes you can do the same for the sensitivity analysis as well so um, that gives us uh, an overview of the basic functionality of the app we have a couple of other things these are references to some of the ideas in the app so you can look up and find out more information about some of the methods used and we keen to acknowledge all the packages that we have utilized the R packages utilized in creating the app uh, and all those are used here and we would like to acknowledge obviously all the hard work that's gone into making those there's a longer um, notice about data again you can read it at your uh, leisure if you use the app so the only other thing I really want to show is um, how you get your own data in here and what we recommend is you choose the format that you want I'm going to go for the simplest here for speed and then you download the example data set and that should download and I'm going to open that in Excel there we go opened in Excel so that's the data that we were using I'm just going to just uh, so how it works add a different uh, a new study at the end and um, I'll try and give it some extreme uh, results Oops. there we go so if I've just added a study just to just for example and if, if you wanted to add a complete different data set which you probably will just delete the data but keep the headings the same uh, and that way the program is very exacting but you'll make sure you, you've done okay you, you'll get the right uh, labels for the, the headers which is important and I'll just put this into documents here and call that demo update there we go save that there it's saving as comma delimited which is what it uh, came in as into Excel and you know that's going to be the right format if we jump back to the app again I'm just going to here go here to select the file and uh, we're well, not in downloads but in documents there we go and that should be it there yes and there we've updated the data set we've loaded our own Z's included and if we do a meta-analysis here we should see that it's very bad performance and uh, right down here skewing the results just silly example but just showing you how easy it is to get your own data in as well so I think that's uh, about all uh, I need to show you as I say there is a manual you might say what if I want to include the covariates into the analysis what if I've got imperfect gold standard what if I want to compare tests well our other app um, the MetaBase DTA is the more advanced one allows those things and we'd recommend you looking at that but we think this is uh, compact and simple to use and does what a lot of people want um, and yeah we'd love to hear from you if you use it um, please give it a try if you do diagnostic test accuracy reviews thank you for watching back to Nicola in summary the main advantages of meta DTA are that it is a user-friendly interactive tool that allows researchers to conduct bivariate meta-analysis using their own diagnostic test accuracy data and no coding knowledge required. It allows the inclusion of risk of bias data and facilitates sensitivity analysis. It allows data exploration through novel interactive graphics and it facilitates effective communication of results through interactive displays, which allow the user to input the prevalence for their population of interest. MetaDTA is an established app currently used by researchers worldwide with approximately 400 users hours per month. Features not currently available in MetaDTA include allowing for an imperfect gold standard, different test thresholds, comparative analysis of two candidate tests, and subgroup analysis and meta-regression. However, if you're interested in a platform that does include these additional features, then please check out our MetaBase DTA Esmart Comp 2023 tutorial. Finally, this slide provides links to the MetaDTA app and GitHub, as well as key references. We welcome user comments and feedback, and our contact details are available on the front page of the MetaDTA app. Thank you for listening.